So the latest darling of the worldwide fashion industry is a 14-year-old girl called Tavi Devinson. Um, I'm going to read this carefully so that the members of my team can quake. <laughs> she has amassed four million followers, four million followers for her blog, which is called Style Rookie. And they get about a million and a half hits a month. We have some websites that don't do nearly as well as that. So, and what, what you'll see if you go up on her blog is she does these very comprehensive analyses of various catwalk shows and features a lot of pictures of herself in very exotic, eccentric outfits that she contrives, puts together by herself. And on one of these blogs, I caught uh, a little uh, quote that she, uh, that she presented based on her bat mitzvah speech. It reads as follows. As I said earlier, the Nazarites wore just enough to keep them warm, believing that that was the wish of God. <laughs> Tommy, what did you mean by that? Well... Come on. Well, I wasn't really listening because it's weird to hear about myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, so what did I say? <laughs> You said, the Nazarites wore just enough to keep them warm, believing that that was the wish of God. Oh, well, um, the Nazarites believed that they should only, that they should live at the bare minimum and only what they needed and just what kept them warm, and they thought that was what God wanted for them. Right, but were right. you making a fashion point? Did you think that was a good thing? No, well, I was saying that, um, I th and I don't know how much I, would stand by this now, but what I said then was that, um, um, was that the, if, you know, if God wanted people to have a creative life that is enlightened and takes advantage of life's many wonders, uh, he or she wouldn't want um, people to limit themselves just to what they needed. I so. see, I see, I see. <laughs> Just before you speak, we have a little video clip that okay. I think will help people get a sense of what you do. So can we roll that video? This is Tavi Jevinson. I've never had the intentions of trying to change uh, the industry or shake up fashion or anything. Fashion just makes everything day to day less mundane. Once dismissed, but vastly gaining acceptance with a new style of fashion journalism, bloggers are quickly nudging away at the dominance of the fashion establishment. And one young lady in particular has everyone talking. 13-year-old Tavi Gevinson composes her hugely popular Style Rookie blog from her parents' house outside Chicago with a quality and sophistication beyond her years. But with priority status and front row seats at many of the most coveted shows, recently she's more celebrity than suburbanite. Carry on. Um, yeah, I'm totes so a wonder kind, whatever. Um, okay, so I didn't really know what to talk about. I didn't want to talk about fashion because I write about it all the time. And um, what I was really obsessed with when I had to come up with this, and I'm still obsessed with it, and I think it's just going to last, is Sassy Magazine. And every time this week that someone has asked um, what I'm talking about, I've just started to tell them, but then... It, I've just gone into the whole speech, which is why my title is so long. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, so Sassy Magazine was um, started in 1988. It was a magazine for teen girls, and at that time it was like the anti-every-other-teen magazine, which basically told teenage girls to 
be either what boys wanted or what their parents wanted. And like uh, one of them back then encouraged girls to go to college because they could meet a potential husband. And um, yeah, nothing to do with education. So like they would have articles about uh, female drummers. Um, they had a, an article on Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love and in it, uh, Courtney says, I'm sorry for this zit. And she, po she points to her forehead and Kurt says, zits are beauty marks. And um, so like, um, as it goes, uh, Sassy eventually was sold to another publishing company and became commercial and its fans would like have bonfires with the new Sassy because they hated it and it was awful. And, um, but, and they had to become increasingly commercial but before they went, were officially sold, um, like one way that they would play with their um, having to be more commercial was like up there it says, doesn't she make you want to buy this with her lovely wholesome smile and non-alternative styling? Note also the appealing white background. So they were just very, like the writing was very clever. It was such a positive message for teen girls and boys read it too because it was like funny and it wasn't all like exclusively about makeup or anything. Um, like there there's a, a Girls wrote in boy questions and Thurston Moore answered them and you should really just Google it because it's the most amazing thing ever. And um, <laughs> so, and just a little more about uh, their like mantra and stuff. Uh, it is so nice to see a multi-platinum rock star in love with an opinionated feminist ambitious rocker. And then the boy philosophy was, boys are cute and we like them unless we hate them, but they're mere dressing on the salad of life. We find it much more sensible to hang out with people, male or female, whose company we groove on, not to go hunting for a mate. And the writers also just have their first names because um, it was like, you know, they only use their first names. It was like they were your friends. And um, yes. So, yeah, basically Sassy had a positive feminist message. It, you know, uh, clothes were fun and fashion was fun, but it didn't have to be about pleasing other people. And it encouraged girls to speak up and share their opinions and be themselves. So Sassy was also, you know, its prime was in like the 90s. So um, it uh, was part of that alternative culture, so like Riot Girl and Sonic Youth and Hole and Chloe Sevigny is in the corner, she interned there, and Doc Martens. So countercultures. Um, a sassy of today wouldn't have a counterculture like that to latch onto. There are beatniks, hippies, punks, uh, grunge and gangster, and now there's nothing. Um, <laughs> And this is because, for one, they spread too quickly because of the internet, so everything's co-opted much faster. And it's like you have, like, Taylor Swift is like America's sweetheart, and Liz Lee is like that um, girl on MTV who's like the outcast at her school. But they're both advocating, like, they're both being the underdog. And when you have those two people that are like kind of supposed to be opposites, as both the underdogs, then like they're, yeah, no, underground is like overground, and there's Taylor Swift in her glasses. And, um, <laughs> and so here's what I'm thinking. Um, well, to state the obvious, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Um, a sassy of today. Now, this is something I would potentially like to start, but this isn't like product placement because the product doesn't exist yet. So just think of these as things for our general society, sure. Um, so if a sassy of today couldn't latch on to, you know, underground bands or an underground way of dressing or um, like anything like that, how would it be for like the underdog? And does the underdog still exist? Uh, yes, it would be necessary. Um, and the underdog does exist, just not in the ways where um, she may not be wearing like Doc Martens and, um, reading Kurt Vonnegut and she may just be someone who thinks differently and that's what it's a matter of. Uh, one girl wrote in, er, well Sassy had an article about feeling alienated and how to make it work for you and it had um, a, um, what did I say? Okay, well, and it had a, um, it targets its audience and it says, you dye your hair blue, you write a feminist zine, 
uh, and you read Kafka and stuff, and a girl wrote in and she was like, look, I'm not a cool outcast, I'm just a plain dork. Like, I don't, like, I don't wear Doc Martens and I don't read Kafka, and I'm like, what do you have for someone who just is different, um, but not in those ways? So, but I, so I think that there has to be something for girls like that. Plus, um, you know, the other argument of whether a sassy is still needed is because, well, A, magazines that sucked back then have improved drastically, so it's not as badly needed. And um, also, because of the internet, it's like, you know, sassy acted as like a girl's best friend if she, like, hated her schoolmates and stuff. But now there's the internet, and people can find other people similar to them. So, the most subversive thing that a magazine could do today wouldn't be featuring weird clothes, it wouldn't, for a magazine for teen girls, it wouldn't be featuring weird clothes or weird music. It would be being honest and encouraging teen girls to be vocal. So, the different uh, components of a potential magazine um, would be broken down like this, and these are things kind of being taken from sassy, but also of my head. So, um, fashion, it's fun, that's why I'm here. It's not um, about like looking really pretty because of a boy or because you want to make girls jealous or anything. Uh, featuring independent designers, but also um, that fourth bullet is a little weird, but what I mean is that um, it's not like every page would be trying to sell something. It would just, like, if a Rodarte dress is featured, we don't expect a girl to spend thousands of dollars on a dress. It's just there because we think it's really cool, and then they're not constantly marketed to. Um, and it would, there would be an actual review of collections, because I, I know girls care about this, because they comment on my blog and say their opinion on collections, and fashion is reflective of society, and so I think it's important to look at. And um, so with pop culture, offering a wide range of opinions. So yeah, like we'd be featuring, I guess, you know, like indie bands and stuff, but also uh, critiquing um, what like, you know, Miley Cyrus's new video means and what it means that everyone's freaking out about it because she's dancing in like a leotard, but no one batted an eyelash when Justin Bieber sang Love How You Do Me. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and also, um, you know, just critiquing it in a way that's interesting, but obviously, like, in the end, it's a magazine and it's fun, and it wouldn't just be like, what does this mean? And um, celebrity, there wouldn't be celebrity worship. It would just be, we like these people because we dig their work, and it, I feel like, I feel like that last decade we had was just like a black hole that can only be defined by, like, celebrity culture, and like, yeah, that's gross. We're done with that. <laughs> um, and so... Um, uh, relationships, the sassy philosophy. We like boys except when we hate them, but they're the mere dressing on the salad of life. So like at the bottom here, um, that was an article where two of the writers, uh, Margie and Marianne, and yes, I've like read all the issues a billion times, um, where they tested out man getting tips from YM and Cosmo and the results are hilarious and prove how totally stupid those tips are. Politics, you know, more Colbert than Glenn Beck, but offering a wide range of opinions. Um, and it's important, I think it, it's not a subject exclusive to adults or exclusive to boys or anything like that. Um, and activism, which is so important and I think that it's maybe more convincing for uh, girls to for anyone to be an activist when it doesn't sound like it's coming from like a, like an after school special kind of voice and um which brings me to feminism and this is really important for teen girls like my friend just visited the college she'll be um attending in the fall as a freshman and there were 500 kids in the room and she um and this woman was speaking and she said, who here is a feminist? And my friend out of 500 kids was the only one who raised her hand. And then afterwards she talked to some girls just like mingling and they were like, well, yeah, like I agree with like equal rights, but I just, I don't want to attach myself to that stereotype. But stereotypes don't change unless people change them. And like none of that, I'm a humanist stuff because we've all been there. Like the thing, like, <laughs> um, the thing is that 
like being a humanist, like duh, it's not like I'm anti that. I just mean that being a feminist, you're doing something just by identifying yourself as that because you're changing the stereotype. You're showing that a bunch of different people can be one. So, and that's important for teen girls because it's like we're at this time now where it's 2010 and the idea of sexism is so stupid that we kind of just can't imagine that it's there. And the issues aren't as uh, plain to see as like voting rights or working rights. And um, I think that, you know, the issues, especially for the feminist issues affecting teen girls, they're a bit uh, harder to talk about than that. They're rape and eating disorders. And, you know, people don't want to talk about them as much because they're horrible and they're scary. And they are, but um, right, talking about how it's the age of women isn't the thing to do either, because it just means you're scared of feminism. And, um, and I think that, um, I mean, the fact of the matter is that uh, girls have always been told to keep quiet, and it would be such a different world if half of the population hadn't always been told to not be vocal. But um, it's not the age of women unless it can be the age of girls too, because as um, Erica Jong said this morning, like her movement, it, you know, it kind of went away and this needs to stay. So that's why it has to be, um, teen girls have to, you know, be a, a part of that as well. And that's why it isn't just complaining to say so. Um, whew, okay. <laughs> and also, um, this is probably the thing that we take the most from Sassy and yeah. And also, the last thing is community. Uh, Sassy was very reader-oriented, obviously, but in a way where, um, like, you know, they had a Stuff You Wrote page in every issue with poems, and there is a, you know, there is a community around it. Girls would uh, find ways to meet up with each other on the basis that they both read Sassy. And um, also, um, well, like, and I, I'd like to think the community is still alive and well, because I just saw a blog post a girl wrote about a poem she sent in, and, it, and Sassy featured it, and it was a poem that meant a lot to her, and yeah, and um, so then she had the issue and she lost it, and she hasn't seen it in like 16 years or something like that, and I have that issue, and um, I'm sending it to her, so the Sassy community is alive and well, I would like to think. <laughs> and, um, um, and also the writers and editors as friends. I mentioned that they only used their first names and um, they also just, like the writing was so relaxed and it wasn't condescending and it didn't sound like a parent or a, you know, it was just like your friend. So I think this is something that we need. Um, maybe not as a magazine, because I don't know if like that's even gonna work, but, or if like I'm even gonna, yeah, that's a big project, but um, I, but just as things that, in general, I guess I want you guys to think about and like spread. And I couldn't think of a like good last line, so that's about it. <laughs> Thank you. I've had some people send up some possible questions, and, and of course, they're very eager to know what your opinions are about various designers, yeah. who your favorite designers might be, whether you're wearing someone's frock, or is this a, a Jevonson design? This is an accumulation of like thrift and happy socks and Mew Mew and yeah. <laughs> How about the established designers, since you're now going to all the major shows, you're sitting in the front row, uh, who do you meet, who do you hang with? Uh, who, well, I don't, that's a weird question, I don't want to be like, you know, ah yes, this is my life, and like naming names and name dropping, that's kind of... Um, <laughs> But, well, so I'm not going to list any that I, like, know, but I have my favorites. Okay. Um, 
Comme de Garcon, uh, Prada and Miu Miu, Alexander McQueen, Rodarte, Vivian Westwood. Um, there are a lot. <laughs> John Galliano. Um, yeah, it goes on for Do a long time. Do you criticize people in your blog? Yeah, when I've, but I try to keep it critical and not just like snarky <laughs> analogies and yeah. No, oh, I understand that. <laughs> so the last critical statement you made. I don't remember. <laughs> I would have to look. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't remember. Can't remember. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah.